What should you avoid in your skincare? Well, there are thousands of potentially toxic substances and ingredients that can be in your skincare, especially if you live in the United States. So we're gonna go over five of the worst ones of these and I'm gonna show you how you pick a clean, safe skincare product line for you. My name is Dr. Anthony and I'm known as America's holistic plastic surgeon. I help health conscious men and women look their best by teaching them a holistic approach to beauty. And today, we're gonna to talk all about what you should avoid in your skincare to be safe. So the problem is, is that our makeup and our skincare is filled with toxic chemicals. Now this isn't a scary video. I'm not here to try to scare you and say, oh geez, you gotta throw all your products away. If you put it on your skin, you're gonna get skin cancer uh, or you're gonna uh, reduce your fertility you know, next week or anything like that, no. But the issue that we have is that when you really look at the statistics, the EU has banned more than 1,300 chemicals from their skincare products. Whereas in the United States, we banned only 11. Okay, so what's going on here? Well, once again, these chemicals are not chemicals that are going to necessarily cause you to die or give you cancer a month or even a year from now. But when you are applying potentially harmful chemicals to your skin, day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, decade after decade, they can have potentially harmful results or harmful impacts on your health. And that's why it's important to be aware of these and of many others. So the question then is, is what chemicals should you avoid? And the second one is, how do you then pick your skincare line? So we're gonna go over that and I'm gonna show you how you pick your skincare line at the end of this video, so stick with me. All right, so the first product that you, ingredient that you wanna avoid are parabens. Well, you may already buy skincare products that have, say that they're paraben free because people are being educated that parabens are not good for your skin or for your health. They go by the names of isopropyl, butyl, isobutyl, and others ending in paraben. So they're usually pretty easy to spot. Parabens are used as preservatives in skincare products, and they are known as xenoestrogens, meaning that they mimic estrogen in the body. Uh, and you don't necessarily want to put something on your skin that starts to mimic estrogen. And one issue that we worry about is their hormone altering effects, because if they mimic estrogen, how is that gonna then alter your hormones and your health? And this is especially then in relation to breast cancer. So parabens are something that you definitely wanna avoid if you can in your skincare products. The second group of products uh, of ingredients are ethanolamine. They go by these names and they are basically used to make skincare products feel creamy. Now you may have used some completely all natural skincare products uh, that are made let's say just with oils and put it on your skin and find that it just doesn't have the consistency that you want. And that's one of the problems with some of the all natural skincare products. They just don't feel right. They don't blend into your skin. They don't absorb in like you want them to. And so skincare companies use ingredients like ethanolamine to make the products feel better for you. But the problem is, is that their exposure is linked to liver cancer and to precancerous changes in the thyroid and in the skin. So they are potentially harmful, uh, once again, with potential cancer. Phthalates, something you may have heard about. They go by many different names. Well, phthalates are used to make products feel more pliable. Once again, making the cream feel better on your hands as you apply it and as you apply it onto your skin of your face and your body. But the problem with phthalates is that they may cause birth defects and cancer. So you wanna avoid those phthalates if you can. Polyethylene glycol, that's another one that you wanna keep in mind. They're known as PEG compounds. Well, these are widely used as thickeners and moisturizers. So you may see in a night cream, polyethylene glycol in that, uh, in a day moisturizer. Uh, once again, these are put in to give a certain type of feel to the product that we kind of like. The problem with polyethylene glycol is not so much the polyethylene glycol, the PEG itself, which in and of itself is questionable safety-wise, but it's that they may be contaminated with ethylene oxide and 1,4-dioxane, and these are known carcinogens, okay? So because they can be contaminated with that, you wanna try to avoid the PEG compounds in your skincare products. And then we have my number five, formaldehyde releasers. They sound kind of scary, right? So they go by many different names, 
And basically, when you apply this on your skin, it does re they do release formaldehyde into the air. And we know that formaldehyde causes DNA damage and can cause cancer as well. Well, you may say, well, Dr. Ian, wait a minute. Aren't cadavers, aren't they, uh, um, you know, aren't they used in, uh, uh, formaldehyde used to preserve them? And aren't there people who are embalming cadavers, you know, that use formaldehyde all the time? Weren't you in gross anatomy and you worked with cadavers? Yeah, yeah, we worked with cadavers every single day when I was in medical school in gross anatomy. And yes, these cadavers are um, preserved using formaldehyde. So is formaldehyde dangerous then? It can't be if they're exposing medical students to it, right? Well, there was a study that showed that funeral workers who do a lot of embalming have a higher risk of myeloid leukemia than funeral home workers who are not exposed to the embalming process. So there definitely is some truth here. The problem is, is we don't know how much dose is necessary to give you cancer, to cause this DNA damage. We don't know. And for that reason, I recommend you try to avoid formaldehyde releasers when you're using them in skin, when they are put in skincare products. So these are my top five uh, items that you really wanna try to avoid in your skincare products. So on the flip side then, how do you know what skincare products to buy? Um, it's hard because you can write a list of all these different things and look on the ingredients, but I know that that's not easy to do. So one thing you can do is to opt for clean beauty. There are skincare companies out there who are being very open and honest of what they do not have in their products. And they'll say, no formaldehyde, no parabens, no phthalates. And there are certain companies that are really taking a stand against it and are trying to lobby the government to try to get rid of uh, a lot of these harmful products and chemicals from our skincare. So these are just the names of some of these companies that I do uh, recommend that are um, responsible for clean beauty and the clean beauty movement that I think is so important in our skincare today. You probably have heard of Beauty Counter. I know of a lot of people who love Beauty Counter products. Amarie Skincare, I know the owner of that skincare brand. They pride themselves on clean skincare. Uh, the Spa Doctor Skincare, that's a great line of skincare products from a friend of mine, naturopathic physician, Dr. Trevor Cates. Uh, the Ordinary, you've probably heard of The Ordinary, that also, once again, no uh, parabens, none of these harmful substances that a lot of the other skincare companies may have. And I started my own line several years ago called Yoon Beauty, which I believe is a perfect combination of natural and organic ingredients, but medically active ingredients as well. So combining kind of the best of both worlds to fill in that gap of natural and effective. But opt for clean beauty, look for clean beauty products because you know that they're not gonna have a lot of these harmful substances that maybe some of the more mainline traditional skincare companies may have. There's some other resources too. The Environmental Working Group has a website called the Skin Deep website. So if you are wondering about a particular ingredient in your skincare product, you can put it into their database and they will give you uh, their rating of how safe that ingredient is. Is it carcinogenic? Does it bind hormones receptors? You know, is there um, a high rate of uh, allergic reactivity to it? They'll give you that information. There's also even easier an app called the Think Dirty app. And this is one of my favorite apps to use uh, when I'm looking at skincare. But for major brands of skincare, whether it is a cleanser or a toner or a moisturizer, um, you can actually input it into this app and it will give you their rating of just how clean and how safe the product is. So this is a must download, would definitely encourage you. Well, we've got two other videos if, you, if you're interested, the perfect morning skincare routine and the perfect nighttime skincare routine that we're gonna show you right now.